Good morning, DeSoto Hills. Just want to tell you, it's time to take your signs down because we're going to start congregating here again uh, on June 21st, week from today. Uh, so go ahead and take your sign down. And uh, I will tell you this, uh, you might not want to throw it away. I hope we don't have a resurgence of what has been going on, but maybe just stick it in a place and uh, where you could get to it. And if we, if we do need it again, uh, you'll have it ready. If not, as you see it uh, in the days ahead, in the months ahead, in the years ahead, if you see it stuck back, it'll just give you a reminder to give thanks that we are once again back together as God's people. Enjoy the service today. Look forward to seeing you the 21st. God bless.
is in his blood. Jesus, light of heaven, friend forever, his kingdom come. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not Alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You called my name. uncertainty of the days we live in and more recently the unrest that's kind of permeating our nation is another reminder why we need to experience the seven up challenge 
the church as never before because the times in which we're living needs to hold high the light of Jesus because we know ultimately he is the answer for everything we're going through. While uh, it's fine for us to evaluate the social injustices that are obviously a part of our nation. And, and while it's all right to articulate what those are and, and to try to regulate uh, so they won't take over and be uh, the terrible things happening in our world, we know this, that ultimately only Jesus can eliminate or alleviate uh, the things that are in people's hearts that are causing the hatred and uh, all that is associated with that. And so, uh, as never before, DeSoto Hills, we need to be holding high the light of Jesus because he is the answer to the, to the social injustices and to the uh, sexual immorality and to the hatred and all those things that, that seem to be permeating at times our nation and our world. We know that Jesus continues to, to be the answer uh, for that. And, and the reality is that uh, we are concerned uh, about all that is going on in our world. And, and those things need to be addressed. But we understand this, that, that uh, the, 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 although the protests are fine, the protest alone will not bring about the solution. And while the policies are fine, policies alone will not bring about the ultimate solution. And while politicians are involved or personalities are involved, we understand that all of those things, while they may at some point be helpful, ultimately only the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in transforming the heart of an individual will really be the solution. Uh, as Andre Crouch said years ago, Jesus is still the answer for the world today. And so the church needs to be all it can be. We don't want to be a distracted church like the church at Ephesus. We, we, we don't want to be a delusional church like the church at Perma, Pergama that we looked at last week. We don't want to be a discouraged church like the church at, at Smyrna. And, and today, we come to the church at Thyatira, and we don't want to be as a church or as individuals a diplomatic church. Now, diplomacy has its place. And diplomacy, when you talk about diplomacy, diplomacy is talking about have, having a sensitivity to the situation or to individuals that will bring about some kind of positive effect. Hear me today. That while uh, diplomacy should, should guide us in our mission, in other words, uh, we, we ought to be sensitive to the needs of people and sensitive to where they are, sensitive to what they're going through. While, while diplomacy ought to, to guide us, diplomacy can never become our goal. Now, let me put it a while, uh, another way. While, while we ought to be sensitive to not uh, intentionally hurting people's feelings or making the matters work, while we ought to be sensitive to that, that cannot become our goal. The, the, the reality is, if we continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, it may hurt some people's feelings. It may make some people mad. It may offend some people. And while that's not our, our goal, we don't want to offend people, nor can we make it our goal, as I think the church at Thyatira was doing. They were trying to be so diplomatic in not hurting somebody's feeling or having a confrontation with somebody, especially this lady who is referred to as Jezebel. Uh, probably not, that, that wasn't probably her real name, but, but she kind of had the, the mentality and the motivation and the momentum of that Old Testament uh, Jezebel that we find with Ahab. And so the reality is we, we need to be careful. And I think the church at Thyatira, Tower, where there were a lot of good things going on, one of the bad things in that church, they were, being so, they, they were trying to be so uh, diplomatic. Diplomacy had become a goal instead of a guide. And we certainly, as we move through these difficult times, we want to be sensitive to people and what's going on in their life. But, but we don't need to be so sensitive to them that we don't tell them the truth, the whole truth nothing but the truth. And that certainly seems to be the concern of the Lord as he sends this letter via John to the church at Thyatira. Uh, Revelation chapter 2 verse 18. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, the words of the Son of Man who has eyes like the flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, 
your love and faith and service and patient endurance, and that your latter works exceed the first. But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her onto a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her, I will throw them into great tribulation unless they repent of her works. And I will strike her children dead, and all the churches will know that I am the one who searches the mind and the heart, and I will give to each of you according to your works. But to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some uh, so-called the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden. Only hold fast what you have until I come. The one who conquers and keeps my works unto the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he will rule with them in a rod of iron, as with earthen pots are broken into pieces. Even I myself have received authority from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, in each one of these letters, we try to look at this outline, the, the, the place. The place. Where is this letter going to? The city to which the church is located that it is going to. I, I will tell you three things about this city. Uh, number one, it is a red stain city. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Prior to the Romans, uh, especially prior to the Romans coming, uh, the city had been known to, it was, it was kind of a, uh, of, a, of a throwaway city in that it was positioned in such a way to try to hold back the enemy in order to give the people in Pergamum time to take safety or make precautions. And so, Thyatira was known for being run over time and time and time again by all kinds of enemies. They, they were kind of what I would consider kind of a throwaway city. Uh, we didn't care much about this city. It was just simply used as a barrier to prepare uh, the city of Perma to kind of get ready for what was coming in the invasion. And so in, so in that respect, I call it a red, uh, a red uh, stain city. The second thing, it is a blue collar city. It was known for its uh, guilds. Uh, we would call them today more uh, it, it labor unions. It was known for its, its guilds or its labor unions. And so it was a very blue collar. And, and if you were going to work in a fire tower, you're going to have to be part of, of one of these guilds. And so it's red stained. Uh, it's blue collar. The third thing I tell you, it's, it's kind of a white knuckle city in, in this reality that if, uh, if, if, if you had to be, if you were going to work there, you had to be in one of these guilds. And if you were in one of these guilds, you kind of had to uh, uh, adhere to whatever deity that uh, guild kind of uh, associated themselves with. There was no major uh, religious uh, deity in, uh, it was just uh, kind of whatever guild was focusing on whatever deity. And if you were going to be a part of that guild, uh, you better uh, focus on that deity. And so in that sense, it was kind of a white knuckle city. So the place, uh, the people, again, Thyatira, the church there, uh, located there, uh, again, and we've said it over and over, probably a mission of Ephesus. Ephesus, that very strong church. It's a reminder of, of why the church at Ephesus did not to be, de need to be distracted, as we talked about that first letter, because they were kind of a, a model. They were kind of a mentor for these other churches, including Thyatira. The fourth thing we always look at in these letters, the presentation. How does Jesus present himself? When, when, it's, uh, when you talk about Ephesus, it's that hand. When you talk about uh, uh, Smyrna, it's that breath. When you, when you talk about uh, Pergamon and, and the reality of, of what he's doing there and, and what he's showing, it's, it's about that stone uh, and, and, and the Lord uh, uh, reassuring them. Uh, and the manna that he's giving them, the, the reality of what he's doing as he moves in and among them, and, and he is that sharp two-edged sword. We talked about that last week. It, it's his tongue that he's focusing on because the false teachers have slick tongues. He has a sharp tongue. But when you come to Thyatira, Jesus presents himself in, in two ways. Number one, he focuses on his piercing eyes. 
I think the Lord is saying to Thyatira, you may not see through Jezebel. You may not see what her motive is, but I certainly see clearly what her motive is. So the piercing eyes. The second thing, he talks about his planted feet, his bronze feet. They are, they are planted. And, and in that sense, the Lord is reminding them, I'm not going to be moved. I, I'm not moved by the teaching of this. I, I, am, not to, I am not moving toward her. Uh, she's going to have to move toward me. The reality is I, I am standing firm in doctrinally in where you need to be. And so you need to look to me, the one who has those piercing eyes, and to me, the one who has those planted feet. So the presentation. The fifth thing we look at in all these letters is the, the purpose. What is the purpose? And the purpose can be found in, in three things, the good, the bad, and the urgent. There are some very good things going on with fire attire. And, and Jesus mentions those in this letter. In, in this sense, they're guided by love. He says, I know your loves. And so their motivation is they love him and they love uh, each other and, and they love the community. And so they're guided by love and Jesus applauds that. They're grounded in their faith. They understand who the source of their salvation is and they're grounded in that faith. They're a giving people. They're giving themselves in service. They're, they're working and serving and helping. And so Jesus applauds that. They're a gritty church. They're gritty in the sense of their endurance. They're, they're as Jesus will say, they're patient endurance. They're not a, uh, a uh, come as you go. They're not a, a, a fly by the night kind of people. They're not a, 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 of, of only a fair weather kind of Christians. They, they are patiently enduring. Uh, till the end. Not only that, they're growing people. Their, their works are growing. Jesus says, your works now are greater than your former works. And so they're growing. And so there's some good things happening. And uh, it ought to be a reminder to us that you can calculate everything that is right in your life and everything that is right in, in my life and even everything that is going well in the life of DeSoto Hills. And yet it does not mean that we are are perfectly on mission with him. There are some, can be some avenues that we too, like the church at Thyatira and Pergamon and, and, and Sardis and uh, Ephesus need to deal with. So the good is those things. What is the bad? Well, he says the bad. The bad is you are tolerating the teachings of a lady who calls herself a prophetess by the name of Jezebel. Let me tell you what's difficult about what's going on. Number one, the approach. The approach here, instead of being an external thing that they're dealing with, like persecution, it, it obviously is an internal. Jezebel obviously is, is somehow a part of what's happening in the church of Thyatira. And so it's an internal thing. It's a slow thing as opposed to a speedy thing. It's kind of a, a slow thing. And, and, and like the church at Pergamon in some ways, they are really tolerating this teaching, and what they tolerate is going to take them over. And so, so the approach is kind of different. The avenue uh, is different. Jesus really calls out this lady. Again, I say to you, as I said in the introduction, I don't think actually her name is Jezebel. But when you think about uh, the Old Testament Jezebel, this lady, like the original Jezebel, there are some things about her, her uh, perhaps her agenda. Uh, perhaps her uh, uh, and Antigone, uh, and uh, her her kind of anti-establishment mentality. P perhaps her appeal. Perhaps her approach. Uh, perhaps her agenda. All of those things, like the Jezebel of the Old Testament, it seems to be apparent. And, and like the Jezebel, then this so-called prophetess has a lot of appeal. And so people, uh, people are, are what, she, what she's saying uh, sounds pretty reasonable to some folks. And although there's some in Thyatira, obviously, who know she's teaching wrong, they just don't want to buck the system. They just don't want to confront her. And maybe it's her uh, 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 appeal. Maybe it's her agenda. Maybe it's her aggressiveness. 
but uh, they, they're just really permitting her to continue to sow these seeds of what is eventually going to be discord. So uh, the, 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 the approach is different, and the avenue here is different, this, this, this Jezebel. What would, be, uh, what would be her approach? We talked about that. But in, in teaching, what is her approach? Jesus says through the letter that, uh, you know, part of her problem is this sexual immorality that she is, uh, uh, she is promoting. And uh, it's probably speculation, but there could be several reasons. Maybe she's teaching a, a type of dualism. Uh, the Greeks were famous for that. And maybe she's preaching a, a type of dualism which says... Uh, the body and the spirit are, are, are separate. And uh, while the spirit is good and while you need to nurture the spirit, the, the flesh is bad and, and it's always going to be bad. And so you can have a great spirit uh, and a bad body and it's okay because just you, you're never going to make the body good. And so you're just going to have to let the body take its course and do what it's going to do. And so kind of a dualism, you can uh, separating the two. You really don't, if your spirit is right, you really don't have to worry about what your body does. So that could be it. I, I think probably it was a, a, a mixture of dualism, but also a mixture of, of humanism. By that I mean this, if it feels good, do it. And part of her teaching was probably telling people, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. And why would God make something so good and deny you of it? And so if it feels good, do it. You're kind of the captain of your own ship. And, and so if it feels good, do it. And so there, there was kind of that, 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 that sense of dualism and that kind of sense of, uh, of uh, humanism. If it feels good, do it. I, I think the third thing, probably a sense of just liberalism. Uh, again, a lot like humanism, but even going further, you know, you, you, you don't need anybody to tell you what to do. You need to decide and what's right for you. Somebody else might not be right for them, but what's right for you is right for you. And so you just don't need to be, uh, you, you don't need to be incarcerated. You don't need to be limited by anything. You need to have a free spirit. And so probably her approach was, Maybe a mixture of those, dualism, humanism, liberalism. That's her approach. What's the effect? Well, the effect is, obviously, Jesus is concerned. Number one is just rapid immorality. Just immorality everywhere. So much so that Jesus is going to say, if she does not repent of her sexual immorality, I'm going to throw her in a sick bed. Now, whether he means literally he's going to make her sick or is he speaking symbolically, I'm going to deal with this in a heavy way, we don't know. But the reality is Jesus is saying, if you don't deal with this, I'm going to. And if she doesn't repent, I'm going to bring a strong hand against her. And so the, 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 the effect is certainly a rampant uh, uh, immorality, sexual immorality. But, but the second thing of that, just a a spiritual insensitivity and indifference. I think what Jesus is so concerned about that, that, that not everybody in Thyatira is uh, holding to her teaching and, and not everybody there has, has bought into her sexual immorality, but their attitude toward that immorality has become an indifference. And so Jesus says, I mean, the bad is you've tolerated this. It's a bad thing. Because not only has sexual immorality become kind of rampant uh, without and within the church, but also just kind of a spiritual insensitivity, indifference to this is saturating the church and, and you need to come to terms with it. The urgent. Well, Jesus is saying repentance. You need to respond to this. Um, and as you, as, as you read what he says here, obviously this, this response is a very sovereign thing. It's guided by a very sovereign hand. As I've already said, Jesus saying, listen, we, we, this has got to be taken care of. And if, and if she doesn't repent, I'm going to, 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 to bring a, a harshness to this situation. It, it, it shows you. And some people would say, well, how could a loving God do that to anybody? I'll tell you how a loving God could do that because a loving God knows 
that what the, what that kind of mentality, that kind of attitude is is not healthy, it's not helpful, it's hurtful, it's not only hurtful to the people who are participating in it, but it's hurtful to the kingdom as as a whole. And I think one reason why Jesus is coming against this is because this lady is a part of the church at Thyatira. And they're not dealing with it. And so Jesus, in a very sovereign way, in a very uh, serious way, in a very severe way, however you interpret what he says, is going to deal with this. But, but let me tell you the, the, the urgent too. There's a soothing here in the midst of this. Jesus reassures those who, so I'm, I'm sure some of them were, read, were going to be reading this and just uh, overwhelmed by it, but Jesus reassures them, listen, I know that, that not everybody there is tolerating this. I know that some of you are holding fast, you believe the truth, and you're, ups, you're upset about this, and I want you to know that. So he, he reassures those that, that I know who the faithful are. I know who the focused are. And so I just want to encourage Jesus to saying to them that, that I, I know, I likewise, I know what she's doing, but I know what some of you are doing too and that you have not given over to this and your attitude and your actions are what they need to be. Uh, the last thing we look at in each one of these letters is uh, the promise. And here the, the, the promise Jesus talks about the morning star. And he, he ends it with saying, and I will give him the morning star, and he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I think the, the morning star certainly is a reminder of what is, is, is to come. I, I think it's a futuristic, in that sense, promise. And, and, and let me just say today that in the midst of all the unrest and in the midst of all the uncertainty, in the midst of even all the unknown that is out there in a lot of ways, hear me, church, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And I think the reassurance, the promise here to the church at Thyatira when he talks about that morning star and the reality of, of what is yet to come for those of us who know him. The overcomers are those who have overcome through Christ Jesus. And again, the focus here is not greediness, genuineness. So the promise, not dealing with greediness, dealing with genuineness. And, and he's saying to those of you who are genuinely part of the kingdom, the best is yet to come. And even as we anticipate the days ahead and what we've got to continue to deal with, not just in the pandemic, but in a lot of the unrest that is re revolved around the, the social injustice that, that sometimes is rampant in our world, the reminder is the best is yet to come. Lord, thank you today for your word. Thank you for the faithfulness to share with us. Thank you for the timeliness, Lord, of where we find ourselves in the 7-Up Challenge during these difficult days. For it's in your precious and holy name I ask it now. Amen. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus at the center of it all, Jesus at the center of it all, from beginning to the end, it will always be it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do, Jesus, you're the center. Around 
will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do Jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you oh, nothing else matters nothing in this world will do Jesus you're the Everything revolves around Jesus, you From my heart to the heavens Jesus, be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart Jesus be the center of your church Jesus be the center of your church And every knee will bow And every tongue confess that you are Jesus Jesus, oh As always, if you need us, uh, we hope that you'll contact us. I will tell you, starting tomorrow, Monday, uh, that uh, we're going back to our regular church office hours. We'll be open Monday uh, through Thursday, 8 to 5, and then on Friday, 8 to 1. And so that starts back tomorrow. This is our last digital church uh, service. And so let me take time to to thank uh, the praise team who's been so faithful to help us and the production team who's been here week after week to help put this together. And I pray it's been a blessing. We know it's not the same as being here, but I hope it's been helpful and uh, you've learned some things in the midst of it. And uh, we'll be grateful as we come back in this place next Sunday for the opportunity we've had to stay connected via the web. God bless you. See you soon.